Hey everyone! In this final video, I'll show you how to create a channel for yourself on YouTube and how to post your video to it. I'll just be going over the basics, but if you want to learn more about managing your YouTube channel and creating videos, I suggest checking out YouTube's Creator Academy video series. Now, if you already have your video ready to go, I suggest following along with this video and doing what I do at each step and by the end, you will have created your own channel and posted your video. Now, for those who use a learning management system, I'll also show you how to post your video to one of those using Canvas as an example. All right, let's get to work. I've written a guide, a step-by-step -step guide for everything I'm gonna do in this video. Now, in order to upload your video to YouTube, you have to create a YouTube channel, so that's part two. But in order to create a YouTube channel, you have to first create a Google account because, you know, Google owns YouTube. So first we'll do that, then we'll create the YouTube channel, then we'll upload your video to YouTube, and then, very briefly, I'll show you how to upload your video to a learning management system, and in this example, we'll use Canvas. Okay, so first, let's create a Google account, and you may already have a Google account in the form of a Gmail account, but if you do, I recommend that you create a new one specifically for communications related to your YouTube channel. I like to keep my personal communications and my professional communications separate, and this is one way I do that. So let's go to Google, and to create a new account, you click these nine dots up here, and click Account. And then click up here, Create an Account. And for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to create a Google account for a fictional person. So I'm gonna call this person J. Smith and their username is J Smith at some numbers at gmail.com. Let's get rid of that at. So J Smith, just some numbers at gmail.com. Okay, and I'm going to create a password for this account. And Google likes to autofill things. You'll notice that I'm covering some of my personal information here. I'll do that throughout the video as needed. Okay, and then hit next. And Google wants to verify I am who I say I am through my phone number. So yes, I'm going to give them yet more of my personal information. So I'm going to type in my phone number here. And now they're going to send me a text with a verification code which I'll then enter in here. And they want my birthday, so I'll give them a birthday. Not like they ever get me a present or anything, but I'll tell them my birthday and my gender. Um, I do recommend that you put in a recovery email just in case you lose your password and username information. I'm not gonna do that here though, so I'll just click next. I'll skip this and sign my life away, I agree. Okay, so now I've got my Google account. Time to go to YouTube and start my YouTube channel. Okay, so I'll sign in. And it looks like YouTube automatically signed me in through my new Google account, but if it doesn't, you can just sign in manually. Now to create a channel, you click this blue, well in this case it's blue icon up here, this person icon, and go down to create a channel. And then get started. And I recommend using a custom name for your channel, so I'll select that. Okay, and 
you're gonna to wanna to put a little bit of thought into your channel name. I recommend that it describes what's on your channel and maybe even something about you. For example, Professor Smith teaches math. And I'll click here and hit create. Okay, and they want me to verify one more time, so I will do that. Okay, so now I've created my Prof Smith Teaches Math YouTube channel. Next step is to upload a picture. So I have a picture ready here. So I'll upload that. And that's a picture of a younger me when I had a lot more hair than I do now, but I'm gonna be okay with that. Moving on. Now it's time to write your channel description, and this is also something you're gonna to wanna to put a little bit of thought into. Like it says here, the description lets viewers know what your videos are about, and your description can also help other people find your videos. So I have a sample description here that I've written for a channel. So here's the description for our hypothetical Professor Smith Teaches Math YouTube channel. On this channel, Professor Smith teaches high school math, including geometry, algebra, and calculus. So that's just telling the viewer what's on this channel. The next sentence says, the videos explain the basic concepts in easy to understand language using real life examples. So that's meant to kind of entice people that might be looking for help on YouTube with math because maybe they're not so comfortable with what they're trying to learn. The next sentence says, they are meant for anyone who wants to get better at math. So this sentence tries to broaden the audience for these videos. Of course, Professor Smith's students will view them, but this sentence here tells the viewer that it's not just for Professor Smith's students, it can be for anyone who wants to get better at math. So it's broadening the appeal a little bit. And next it says at the end of each video, there are two practice questions you can try, which will be solved in the video. So it tells the viewer that they'll actually be doing something in the video and that they'll get help doing it. So this is just one example. You can write whatever you want in the description, but I recommend writing it with as broad of an appeal as you can. Now you can also add some links to other websites, but I'll skip that step and save and continue. Okay, so here's my channel, and now we can finally upload a video to our YouTube channel, and I'm going to click Upload Video. And if you're new to this side of YouTube, you may want to learn more about YouTube Studio, but for now, I'm just going to click outside of this so we can upload our video. So you can just drag and drop your video file here. So I'll do that. Here's my double fertilization video folder with my final video in it. And I'm just gonna drag that right down here. Okay, so now my video is uploading to YouTube and you can see the progress all the way down here. But in the meantime, we can fill in some information about our video, starting with the title, which I want to be double fertilization and seed development. Okay. Next, we have a description of this specific video. So I'll type one in here. This video describes how plants reproduce by double fertilization. It also describes seed development. Now, it's a good idea to try to think about what phrases your potential viewers will use to search for your video on YouTube. Of course, your own students won't have trouble finding your video because you'll send them the link to your video, which is right over here. So 
to direct your students to your video, you can use this video link here. You can email it to them, text them. You can post it on your course website if you have one. And you can even embed the video directly into your learning management system if you're using one. And I'll show you how to do that later. So your students will certainly find your video because you'll tell them where to go. But if you want other people to also view your video, you should use commonly searched phrases in your title and description. Now, double fertilization is probably what someone would use to search for a video on double fertilization. Same for seed development, so I'm pretty happy with the title. However, people might also search for videos on this topic using the phrase plant reproduction. Now, I don't see the term plant reproduction anywhere in the title or description. So I want to put it in the description. And to do that, I'm just going to replace this phrase, how plants reproduce, with plant reproduction. That way, if somebody searches for plant reproduction, my video will be more likely to be returned in that search. There are also lots of other ways that you can optimize your title and video description for YouTube and Google searches, but I won't cover that here. You can learn more about that and many other aspects of YouTube through the Creator Academy. Okay, so let's move on. Um, next is a thumbnail, and usually I just use part of the video as a thumbnail, but you can upload your own image as a thumbnail if you want to. Images from the video itself will be available once it's done uploading. You can also place your videos into playlists. So for example, if Professor Smith here teaches geometry, algebra, and calculus, maybe Professor Smith wants a playlist for each of those three subjects so he can place the videos that he makes into the appropriate playlist. That just makes it easier for people to find videos on a given topic. Now my video here is on double fertilization and within my genetics course that falls within cell division and reproduction. So maybe I'll create a playlist and you go down here and hit create playlist called cell division and reproduction. And I'll hit create. Now if I check this box, the video I'm currently uploading will be placed into the playlist of cell division and reproduction. So I'll hit done. Next, YouTube asks me if this video was made for kids. And for me, no, it was not. So I'll click that. And you definitely want to click more options here because there are a few other things that we have to look at. Now you can add tags if you want to, if your topic is commonly misspelled. For the language, I select English, just plain old English, not any of the dialects. And I hope to add closed captions to my videos someday, but I haven't done that yet, so I'll just skip this. And the next thing I usually set is license and distribution. So I always set my videos to the Creative Commons license because I want to facilitate their usage by other people. This will also make sure that if someone is searching for Creative Commons videos, my video will show up in that search. And I allow embedding for the same reason I want people to use my video. Okay, and the category is education. That's what we're about here. Okay, now we can see down here that the upload is complete and the video is currently processing. So through the magic of video editing, we will fast forward to the point where this video has finished processing. Okay, so it looks like our video has uploaded and we can hit play. Hey everyone, in the last video we examined... Okay, it looks good. And I do recommend that you check how your video looks both before and after uploading it to YouTube, just to make sure it looks okay. And we can view our video on YouTube by following the video link. Hey everyone, 
grows downward toward the alveole. Okay, and you might notice that this video looks a little bit blurry, and that's because processing for the standard definition of this video has been completed, but high definition processing takes a little longer, so don't worry if your video looks a little bit blurry at first, it'll look fine later. And you can see my description shows up right here, as well as the license that I licensed this video under. See where it says reuse allowed? That's important. I want people to know that they can use this video for teaching. Okay, so getting back to our channel, once the video processes a little more, these thumbnails will show up as well, so I can always go back and do that later. The thumbnail is what will show up for the video when people search for it. So it's the first thing that they see before clicking on the video. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit next. And next is video elements, including adding an end screen and adding cards to your video. I'm not going to go over that here. So if you want to learn more, check out Creator Academy once again. For now, I'll hit next. And at this point, you have to decide whether you want to post your video so that people can see it. So if you want people to see your video right away, select public. If you want only people with the video link, for example, your students, to be able to view it, you can click unlisted. And if you only want yourself and people you choose to watch your video, you can click private. So I'll click unlisted for now since this is just a demonstration, but if you want your video to be public, click public. You can also schedule a date that your video will be visible to everyone. Okay, so let's go down and hit save. And at this point you can also choose to share a link to your video through social media, email, or other websites. I'll hit close. And here's my video on my channel. Now there's lots and lots and lots of other things that you can do with your YouTube channel. So check out the Creator Academy to learn how to use all these tools on the left here. Now, in addition to uploading videos to YouTube, you may want to embed your videos within your class website on a learning management system like Canvas. So that's what I'll show you how to do next. Okay, so I'm going to go straight to my course website in Canvas. And this is my home page. It's also the modules page. It has all the learning modules for my course. And here I've created a new module called Cell Division and Reproduction. And that's where I want to place my double fertilization video. But first, I'm going to upload it to my course website using the studio feature in the upper left hand corner here. So I'll click on studio. And I've actually uploaded this video previously, but that's okay. I'll just do it again just to show you how to do it. So to upload your video, you click this add icon up here. And you can actually just use the link to your video to add your video to Canvas. So I'm just going to go back to my YouTube channel, click on my video, and click on, or rather copy, the link. And paste that right in here. And click Add. And Canvas has added my video. Okay, now that the video is in Canvas, I'm going to go back to my home page and I want to add a page to my cell division and reproduction learning module. And there are other ways you can have students view videos, but I like to have videos on their own page within a learning module. So to do that, I'm going to click this plus icon here, and I'm going to select page from the drop down menu, and I'm going to add a new page. And I'm going to call this page double fertilization slash seed development. 
and hit add item. Okay, so there's my new page and I'm gonna click on that and click edit in the upper right hand corner. And this is the page editing tool in Canvas. There are lots and lots of tools here and if you mouse over each of them, it'll tell you what they do. So you can use this one to create a hyperlink of your video so your students can actually watch it right on YouTube. But right now I want to embed my video on this page so my students don't have to leave Canvas to watch the video. So to do that, I'm going to come over here to this blue icon, that's the arc tool, and click on that. And it'll show me my media library, which has my double fertilization video in it. Looks like I've uploaded it several times, that's fine. So I'm going to select my video, just click on it, and click embed. And Canvas will embed my video right within my web page. And you could hit play and preview it here just to make sure it works if you wanted to. Canvas also has this pretty nice tool called Insights. It's right here. And if you click on Insights, and the last time I checked, this tool was still in development, so I haven't used it that much yet. But Insights tells you which students or which users have viewed your video and how long they viewed it for. Now, of course, it doesn't tell you if they're paying close attention to the video when it's playing, but this is better than nothing. So once I have my video on the page, I'll scroll down and hit Save and Publish. Because in Canvas, you have to publish something for it to be visible to your students. Okay, and my page looks pretty good. So my friends, that is how you upload your video to YouTube and Canvas. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our video series. I hope you found it useful. And if you've done everything in the videos, that means that you will have produced your very first teaching video and posted it to YouTube. If so, congratulations. That's quite an accomplishment and one you should be really proud of. By the way, you can now call yourself, like me, an amateur video producer. Now that you're starting to produce videos, it's important that you get as much feedback as you can. So don't be shy about sharing your videos. Show them to friends, colleagues, and especially students. I found that they give the best feedback. And if you happen to know any video production professionals, you can show it to them as well. As always, you can email me a link to your video and I'll try to check it out and give you some feedback. You can also post a link to your video in the comments section below on this channel so other people can check it out. And if you want to host me for a video production workshop, either online or in person as circumstances permit, email me with the subject line workshop. Now, video production isn't something you master right away, as you've probably figured out by now. But the more videos you make, the better they'll get. Before I go, I have a request. Please share the videos in this series with your colleagues and encourage them to make their own videos. I made these videos free because I want everyone to be able to produce their own videos for their students. And the more videos we make, the more we have to choose from to give our own students, and the better their education becomes, which in the end is what this is all about. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching, thanks for teaching, and most importantly, keep producing.